First, congratulations. This is your feature film debut. It is. Thank you. And it's at Benton Film Film Festival. Is going to be the first time we that everybody gets to see it. We have had we had a limited test screening for our executive producer, but this will be the first time a lot of our cast and crew is seeing the film, so we're really excited to share it with everyone. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that you guys shot in North Carolina. How long was your shoot? We shot for 21 days, um, a year ago now, so it's been pretty fun to look back at the behind the scenes photos and realize that you could do a year ago today, we were on set doing, you know, shooting this scene, and now here we are in Bentonville for the world premiere. So it's pretty surreal. It is. I mean, we've got a lot of trees, but nothing like North Carolina. It's, and, and you know, it's, it feels appropriate driving out here the way that I had this question asked of us at, when we were on the red carpet yesterday about the rural nature of Arkansas and this kind of southern energy that it has and why it felt appropriate to bring this film here and I was like you know we didn't think about it when we were submitting to festivals originally but it feels like a nice home for the film for its world premiere because the landscape here and in North Carolina they sort of share some themes in this way. I think the people will get it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask, because uh, it's a beautiful story, and um, on its surface, if you just watched a trailer of it, it would be, oh, this is about a woman that's at a critical point in her life and, and not in a good relationship. Mm -hmm. But you went in another direction, and really, that sister relationship. Oh, yeah. Oh, can you tell me what inspired this? Sure. This feature film, A Song for Imaging, is based off of a short film that I wrote for myself and my business partner, Christy Ray, who's also the lead actress and a producer on Imaging. And we're also business partners. We have a production company, Honeyhead Films. And back in 2015, we were both acting and we had the same agent and we would put each other on tape for auditions and we were just a little bit um, disappointed with the types of roles that we were being asked to read for. They felt very um, sort of vapid and they weren't complex, especially for young women. And I said, well, let me write us a script. Let's let's play sisters, let's be on-screen sisters, and let's write about what we know, which is growing up in the South and issues that we've dealt with, You know, whether it's through familial relationships or sister relationships or romantic partner relationships. So the short film was about seven pages long. We shot it in one day in August on no budget. And it was really just supposed to be an exercise for us. And, but it was the sister story after this film went to some festivals that people kept saying, we want to know about these sisters. We're so interested in them. And that's where the idea for developing the short into a feature came from, was from audience demand. We hadn't really planned to make it a feature treatment, but it was the sister story that came from that. And I'm the middle of three girls. So I feel a lot of connection with my sisters and what that looks like and how you can shape your lives around these female relationships, whether they're cis, like blood sisters or whether it's sisters and your other women in your lives. I think those relationships are really powerful. I did find it was interesting that your pacing in your film is really lovely. To mm -hmm. me, it was like walking through the woods quietly. Mm. That's the kind of pacing. It mm. felt like you took your time developing the characters. But Alex, why did you choose not to go any deeper than you did with him? He seems very one-dimensional. He is, and I think that this film we've discovered has the what you're identifying, these two parallel plots, and this sister story, and this rebirth of Cheyenne, and then her relationship with Alex. And while we wanted to explore the domestic violence and the emotional abuse and financial control that he has over her and the way that he's escalating, and that was an important thing we wanted to explore, was not having a totally one-dimensional antagonist to the point where he's already being physically abusive to her. We wanted to lay the groundwork of the relationship in that escalation process because so often people don't know how to identify that in an abusive relationship and they don't think about that they you know someone might say oh well he's not hitting me 
you know, so I don't think, am I in an abusive relationship? I'm not sure. So we wanted to kind of start from the genesis of where those types of relationships can become toxic. And Hayden, the actor who plays Alex, is a very lovely and dynamic actor. He does a wonderful job with the role of trying to bring some of that a little bit of dynamicism into the character but ultimately we didn't want it to be about him you know we wanted it to be about Cheyenne and her arc and her self-discovery and her relationship with her sister and with her past in this way that she, the, the thing that she ran away from and Alex she got tangled up with Alex along the way and lost herself a bit but really it's about her homecoming so we wanted to make sure that we didn't stray too far into making it about the interpersonal relationship between her and Alex. Okay. Um, one of the questions, because I don't want to give away a bunch. I want people to yeah. see this movie. Okay. <laughs> so that's why I'm being vague yeah. about things. <laughs> I don't want them to see this and go, oh, now I've seen the movie. I know yeah. everything. Uh, but I do, You, what is it, W.C. Fields say, I never work with kids or animals. <laughs> and you have this beautiful the young little actor mm -hmm. on your film. What was it like working with him? Because he just comes across beautifully. Jaden Hayes is a non-actor. He we sh he was in our proof of concept trailer that we filmed to use as pitch material for this, and that was in 2020. So he was newly four in 2020, and we cast him because we loved his authenticity and. Um, just the way that he was and he existed on camera felt so authentic to the region. And so when it came time to cast that role for the feature, we read a bunch of other young boys, some of them who had more on-screen experience, but we always just kept coming back to Jaden and he, because of what he brought to it. And he, he had his days, you know, he had off days where he would get tired and we kind of had to turn going back to one into this game, you know, go, okay, now we're going to go back to one. And it became this, this game whenever we had to do a new take and things like that. But, and, and from a logistical standpoint, you can't really authentically teach a young actor that age an, an accent. So it was really important to us that he have an authentic accent from the region. And I think it plays so beautifully in in the film. And he, I think just because he wasn't an actor, he just existed. And there are so many moments that we found in the editing process that I didn't even see on the day of him reacting that were so beautiful. And I was sitting with our editor, Logan, and I would say, oh, grab that moment. We have to find a, a place for that moment. I didn't even see it on the day I was looking at, because he's my, maybe he's not in the focus. You know, Maybe there's focuses on Mackenzie, who plays Janelle, his mother. And he would do something so simple as like tuck her hair. Like she would touch his hair as like a maternal gesture. And then he would parrot it back to her. And that wasn't directed. That was just him naturally doing something like that. So it was a really beautiful process working with him and seeing him, what he brought to that. He brought such a tenderness mm -hmm. to the film. So yeah. the fact that he's not an actor blows me away. Yeah. <laughs> so that just goes to you, kudos, because as a director, you're responsible for all the performances you get mm -hmm. out of everybody. So you did a hell of a job doing that with Thank somebody you. who's a non-actor. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else. Um, let's see. Da -da. No, that was pretty much the questions that I have. Have you guys gotten, I know it's debuting now, have you gotten any nibbles about distribution? We have a producer's rep that we're working with, um, and he is going to start, we, wanna, we really want to do a festival run, and he's going to start shopping the film later this year. So we wanted to take our time with that um, process, but we are looking for distribution actively um, for the film. But right now we're just enjoying our world premiere, and we want to see, we, ha we have a public publicity team now that's on board with the film. So we're just going to take it through the summer and we've submitted to an, a slate of festivals that would be September, October, November mm -hmm. and we'll kind of see what happens there and, and chart that territory because this is our first feature film so we've, you know as Honeyhead films we've produced, Christy and I have produced many, many short films, we've produced features for other filmmakers but this is our first fully in-house film that we're taking from 
concept all the way through distribution. Um, That's exciting. Yeah, so it's a whole it's a whole new world for us, and we have a great team behind us that's helping us navigate that path in a way that's best for the film. Um, has your partner, who was in the, the mm-hmm. lead, has she, has she been in anything else that I would have seen? Because I was like, where is she from? Because she's so good. Oh, yeah. Christ, Christy's amazing. She's just a natural talent on camera. And I wrote this role for her. Uh, it's really, I love writing for actors. So mm-hmm. I wrote this role for Christy. I wrote Alex for Hayden after seeing him in a another project that I helped produce in Denver. And I spotted him and I was like, that's Alex. If anyone can do this character, it can be him. And Christy's been in a few other short films. She's been in a feature that did really well called Pieces of Talent that was a genre film. Um, And that jump-started a big portion of of her career kind of in the indie scene. But this is kind of a debut for, for both of us in a way. And I hope that it leads to many more opportunities for everyone that's on the team. I think there will be. It, I'd like to say when I watched it, I go, I had to look it up. I go, this reminds me of Winner's Bone. Mm. You know, that was a comp. So, so I'm glad it does. Yeah. Yeah. You've got that same magic in a bottle that Winner's Bone had. Because Winner's Bone really was the first time that anybody looked in that direction as far as telling Appalachian stories, yep. you know, and that there's a whole world over there that nobody's telling stories about. There is, and and that was a big part of why we wanted to tell this story is because as a Southern filmmaker and a creative, I I was like, Man, where are all the authentic Southern stories, you know? Why, why are we just the Daisy Dukes and, you know, the Snaggletooths of the media? You know, it's just, I wanted to explore a story that yes was set in the south and the landscape is definitely a character in the film but it's not really about that it's about people existing and they are in the south so it's real people and that this is just the landscape that they exist in and kind of what they're battling these cycles cycles of abuse generational cycles of abuse cycles of poverty and how do we how do we break those cycles what does that look like from even a small the small level that kind of micro level that we're examining that from and that's what i'm hoping the film can start conversations around among a lot of other themes that are explored last question is um do you have any advice for any young women that are going to see you and go oh i have a story to tell Mm -hmm. how can i you know how do i start what do i do christy and i are totally self-taught filmmakers um we don't usually use that word because it sounds people sometimes get a little bit iffy they're like "Uh, what does that mean self-taught but it we just didn't go to film school we decided we wanted to have autonomy over the types of films that we were involved in and the stories that we were part of being told and we just decided to figure out how to make films so when we first started honeyhead i sometimes it was just christy and i on projects you know i would shoot and edit things and she would produce an ad and we would co-direct projects and we just were figuring it out together so we just learned by doing and that's the biggest piece of advice that i would give young filmmakers young women especially is to take that imposter syndrome and just throw it out the door because you can you can do it and the world is totally open for that type of exploration creatively if you just set your mind to it and find a tribe and surround yourself with people who are like-minded and have the types of creative passions and drives that you have and that's that's really how Honeyhead came to be and we we mentor young women now we started a female filmmaker summer camp for high school girls to help with workforce development to try to get young women um, to a place where they felt more confident especially with technical skills in cinema so not just the types of roles you normally see women in you know hair and makeup you know maybe a producer role we wanted them to feel comfortable with camera, with lighting, you know, these these sort of more hands-on technical roles, editing that you typically see men in. And a lot of that starts from a young age of seeing, bringing women, young women into an environment where other women, they're working with other female professionals that are doing those things. And so they say, ah, that's someone who, you know, I identify with in 
at, as a female, I see that woman doing that. She looks like me, you know, and we brought together a whole diverse group of women to lead this program. And it really made a difference based on what we've heard the girls say after the camp. They, it really made a big difference. And I think that that's like the biggest part is like, once you get through the door, turn around and hold it open for everyone else, right? So like, there's like a big myth about the gate, you know, all this gatekeeping that can happen in this industry. And instead of saying, I worked so hard to get where I am, so like, you have to work hard as well. It's like, let's just turn around and hold the door open instead. So that's a big part of Honeyhead. That's amazing, I love that. Thank you yeah. for what you just said right there, because that, that is a big deal. Yeah. To turn around and hold the door open. Yeah, access. And we really try to hire people on potential overproof oftentimes mm -hmm. because yeah. so often some young, brilliant, creative minds just haven't had the type of access that other people have had in order to hone skills. So you really have to, like, we're really proud that a lot of the young filmmakers in the Wilmington area, like their first credit is a Honeyhead project. It makes us really happy be and because they have a, a platform and sort of a springboard with which they can go off and make whatever career they want to make. But you have to give someone has to give that person a chance you know and in, in an industry that's can be polarized in a way as far as like gender race ethnicity culture and all of that so it really matters you know who you're hiring and and that's what I love about BFF is that we had to fill out this whole form submitting the film and I was talking to Wen Wendy yesterday about that and I said I'm so appreciative that you all did this because I had to check all of our boxes about how inclusive the film was and then it makes you also aware of your gaps and where you need to do better so I'm checking all these boxes yeah 70% female crew you know all female above the line and I was like but here are some boxes that we didn't check. So how can I be more intentional next time about checking those boxes? So that's what I appreciate about places like BFF. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome.